I am Jim Collison and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska and from the offices in Washington, D.C. This is Gallup's Call to Coach with special guest Brandon Miller, recorded on February 21st, 2014. Call to Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches who share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have questions or comments or even some contributions during the show, we do have a live chat room available. It's right below the video window out at coaching.gallup.com. And if you're listening to this, the recorded version of this after the fact, you can email us those questions. Just send those emails to coaching at gallup.com. And, of course, don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center. Super easy. Just gallupstrengthcenter.com will get you there. And for all your coaching resources and training needs, you can also catch the video in both streaming or downloadable audio, audio for offline listening of all our past shows, again, out at coaching.gallup.com. Jeremy Petrosini is our host today. He's not in Omaha, but in Washington, D.C., and Jeremy works as a learning and development consultant with Gallup. Here on the riverfront, Jeremy, it's great to see you, and uh, welcome to Call the Coach. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, as always, it's great great to be here, and for the coaches out there, again, just want to thank you for what you all are doing. Um, Brandon Miller is our guest today, and uh, Brandon is the CEO of 34 Strong. So I'm excited for you guys to hear a little bit about his business, coaching consulting business. Um, he was one of our very first uh, certified strength coaches. So it's, it'll be exciting for you to hear from him, his journey, where he's going. Um, I want to remind you, I know there's some listeners out there today that, that are new to Call to Coach, maybe even new to, to Gallup and, and Strength Finder. But part of our uh, mission to really reach a billion people on the planet who would know and live out their strengths is through... Um, through the vehicle of coaches. And so I just actually came out of a coaching training this week with 14 coaches here in, in D.C. Um, from all over the world. And i um, really excited again that the coaches out there who are joining us today just want to thank you. It's our hope that, again, to reach a billion people, we'd have a million coaches as part of this network mm -hmm. who are just unified in what we're doing. So, Brandon, thank you for being here. And uh, as always, tell us a little bit about your journey of being called to coach. Yes, good morning and uh, hello from Sacramento, California. Uh, Jeremy, uh, Jim, thanks for having me on the show. And a little bit about my story. First of all, my top five uh, maximizer. I'm an achiever, activator, uh, strategic, and a ranger. And 10 years ago, I was serving as an executive leader in a faith group. And the, the senior leader at the time, going through an airport, uh, found the Now Discover Your Strengths book. And when he brought that back, uh, to to the group, we, we took Strange Finder and, and I was hooked. Uh, thankfully, in, in our group at that time, we had a gentleman who had just gone through some Gallup training, so he he did an in-service for our team, and I got I had the, the privilege of being the front guy to take several uh, staff members and hundreds of volunteers through Strengths Finder, and uh, it implemented uh, very well and impacted the organization tremendously. A uh, little bit later uh, on, when my wife and I, uh, after about 07, we had our seventh child. No, our sixth child. I'm sorry, this count sometimes. We'll, we'll get into that in a minute. There you go. Uh, <laughs> we had uh, child number six. We we decided that dad, who had always been had his hand in entrepreneur efforts and doing small business work, um, needed to go one vocation. And so at that time, I, I decided to go into coaching and was looking to carry strengths coaching, strengths finder forward, but but there wasn't a real vehicle for that. So being a, a good activator, I, uh, I I came up with some stuff <laughs> and started yeah. to coach with businesses. That's cool. So, so tell us, back up a little bit, the family piece, right? So yeah. we heard one of six, seven, where, where are we at, right? We're, we're, we're at seven. Okay, so seven kids. And how is strengths, even that journey for your wife, you, tell us how personally that that's, that's impacted you. You know, strengths... And, and I think and, we got a, I think we got a picture of your family too. We can pop. Oh up, yeah, you yeah. can you can yeah put that up right now. So so having strengths come home. You know when we coach, I, I tell people that strengths definitely impacts them professionally, but it really really gets uh, deep roots when it affects you personally. And yeah. getting to getting to take it home. And a few years back, as we were working with businesses and uh, doing what we were doing with and that's what I my teenagers you know hit the 15, 16, 17 mark. So we had them take Strengths Finder and. Great story. My son, uh, Lance, who is the, the, the older one there, we're driving to football practice one day, and he's he's 15 years old, and Dad, as you might see by my, my frame, being the football guy, football coach, uh, very uh, motivated, passionate person, I was telling him how to play and how he's going to, to do this and that, and 
Uh, my son, all 15 years of him, leans over and says, Dad, um, I just need you to know that I'm not like you, and I'm not going <laughs> to play the way you play. i got to do it my way. And, and, and I remember that day thinking, oh, that kind of hurt, but, right. but it was it wasn't, it was a, wasn't a compliment? Uh, it, 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 I don't think it was intended to be at the time. And so uh, a, a season later when he took the Strange Finder and his top five came up and we saw how opposite we were, mm -hmm. it was phenomenal, phenomenal for being able to relate to each other, understand uh, understand that um, my my uh, other daughter Sierra, she's the one on the far right in the photo. Amazing uh, experience with her and with Strange Finder. Sierra was a, a cheerleader, uh, you know, cat, you know, the the most positive girl you can imagine. Um, very very pretty uh, to her dad's chagrin sometimes, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, she uh, she she was doing very well, running track, cheerleader, very popular young lady. And when she took Strange Finder, it really talked about her desire to speak, communicate. She has high command, communication, competition. Mm -hmm. And at our school, they had a group called Mock Trial. And one of the suggestions from the Strength Finder was look into law. And so Sierra uh, shifted groups. And if you know anything about high school campuses, peer groups are kind of the, uh, the their, their way of uh, how they relate and connect. Yep. And this was, this was peer group uh, traveling like uh, globe to globe, right, or, you know, pole to pole. And uh, joined the Mock Trial team. And since that time... Uh, she's traveled uh, to international competitions, wins MVPs, uh, just doing amazing with, with this. So absolute impact in the family and in the marriage. That's awesome. And then I, I like the journey piece, too, of it wasn't just you on your own, but, again, your wife speaking into that. Um, you know, I, I know I've shared this on calls before, but Maximize are number one for me, so you and I share that. Mm -hmm. And Maximize is, again, kind of at their best when they figure out that singular focus of, what can I be world class at? And I, I heard right. that a little bit when you were talking about do I do I get my hands as an entrepreneur out of too many things mm -hmm. and focus in. Tell us a little bit about Thirty Four Strong, how that enabled you to kind of be great at something. And again, I know it's in the early stages too, where you, you may not call it great or perfect yet, but tell right. us about how that's enabling you to do that and a little bit more about the business. Yeah, you know, a year ago when when I went uh, through certification and got to go spend a, a couple winter days out in <laughs> Omaha with you guys. No better time and, to visit uh, Omaha. Yeah. No, no better yeah. time. I, it was my first experience with minus whatever it was. Uh, right. But uh, so thank you for giving me that experience. Uh, but uh, but being out there, really thinking about the the opportunity that we as coaches and trainers throughout the world have for impact and what Gallup's wanting to do. And uh, at the time, the the company I was running was a was a classic business coaching consulting firm. I have a business partner, and uh, you know we were very complimentary. But we decided that we wanted to to merge into a, a company solely focused on strengths. And so, mm -hmm. Thirty Four Strong was born. Uh, you know, the name says what we're about. Yep. And uh, we, we, with being an arranger, I, I love teams. And so we set about to to start to look for team members that would really complement strengths. And it's it's fascinating what happened. We we uh, we there's four of us on the on the team that are partners and each of us is dominant in one of the four domains. So mm. my uh, my COO Darren he he's a, an MBA who is high executing, amazing man, very talented, very focused and driven. Uh, Perry the CPA who's the CFO, uh, he's our relationship guy. That that guy's a glue, walking glue stick. I mean, he mm -hmm. just people connect with him, uh, phenomenal. And Mike our our uh, marketing officer. Uh, Mike's an electrical engineer by education and, and just that high analytical. And so every now and then working on a team, you know, the activator and analytical get to rub shoulders a little bit <laughs> or the, you know, executing relationship building. But that collaborative is is phenomenal. And it really helped us to define that as much as I love coaching, Jeremy, I, I, I am passionate about it. I love to be on that call or be face-to-face -face watching people have those those moments where they, they catch what strengths can do and where it can yeah. take them. Um, but I realized that I, I'm really uh, passionate about building team and about providing a space for, for coaches and trainers to, to collaborate, to learn, to grow together. And so we've, we've really made that part of our niche. Yeah, and talk, talk more about that because I think, again, where you see themes in action, right? So there's 34 of these, these signature themes. Obviously, like you said, that's the intent of, of calling the business 34 Strong. I, you know, I can hear again your maximizer arranger coming into play, and mm -hmm. sometimes when I see that, and people, I'll, I'll wonder or listen for: Are they good at building teams? You know, you've been through the the, the um, accelerated training program or components of it, and knowing that whether it's the the two day you know manager team program or the accelerated, there's a big focus on that. Again, a lot of the coaches who may be listening in today, 
um, whether they're internal uh, within an organization mm -hmm. or they're external like yourself, working with teams is a big piece, right? And, and yes, sometimes absolutely. managers will, will bring you in as a consultant to say, hey, help me. Either we've got a good team, but we want to be great, or we've got some dysfunction in the team. What do we do? So maybe give, give a little bit more on that. So for people out there who are working with teams, what did you discover? How did you find that your Ranger Maximizer helped you do that a little bit? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, as we as we work with teams and we uh, discovered uh, you know some different ways to help package, put systems together, because Gallup provided us such amazing content through the training that we went through, and and having to to sort through that to really come up with not only a piece that you could implement, but that you could market. You had to be able to package it and market it. Yep. And so um, part of our our coaching collaborative, part of our uh, plan was to come up with systems that are implementable for for coaches or trainers and one of those systems and and you'll have to forgive my lack of ideation we call it the lead with strength system okay. <laughs> and like it. Uh, it, it, it's straightforward it, it does the job uh, people uh, uh, seem to respond well and and there's there's five basic components when we, when we work with teams that that we look for and and pretty straightforward the first is getting team buy-in uh, the the first phase of our of our process is one to one, and and for those of you that've worked with someone who's taken the Strengths Finder, you know there's that initial period where they need to become a believer. They need yep. to become a believer that these five words actually fit them. It's who they are, and that that naming, claiming, aiming process. But that name and claim piece, sometimes that coach or trainer across from you helping you reinforce, um, because talents are sometimes so close, right? We 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 can't see them. They're yep. they're present. They're who we are. And so that buy-in piece, and then we we move from the one-to-one -to, -one to the seminar workshop, the the team bonding experience. Yeah. And and this is this this requires a, a you know a little bit of surgery. You have to know um, with that team map that you can build that grid. What what's this team like? Where are they going to connect? We recently worked with a team that was super high on empathy. I mean, it was the the highest empathetic team I've worked with. And uh, these folks uh, did very well with an activity we do where we would have each team member's name on a, one of those giant sticky pads and then walk through the top five and then you'd hear them going, oh, that's that's who that person is. And, oh, and, and that bonding was happening in the room and they took their their pads, stuck them around the wall, and at the end of the day, we did the what we call the yearbook signing party where they went and signed and reinforced each other's and, uh, strengths and they got to take that piece back to the office. Mm. Uh, from, from there, another aspect is team balconies and basements. Okay. Uh, when we coach individually, we, we definitely understand that themes are neutral and that talents can, can work for us in an amazing way, but also we all have some blind spots. And, and teams are no different. I recently worked with a, a, a tech startup in the Bay Area, and it was okay. an eight-person eight executive team, and five of the eight had competition in their top five. So I felt like throwing something in the middle of the room and letting them compete to get it, but sure. I opted not to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but with that team, we, we went through and talked about the, the the balcony, the power that team had was such uh, amazing drive with that competition. But also, where where was the where was the place they had to be careful as a group mm -hmm. and as they move forward? And many teams we worked with, I found that to be very beneficial to know and understand where they need to manage, build systems, processes around the the basement, and then build out that that balcony, and then. Um, third and fourth is is team betterment, where we meet with we go back to one to one sessions with team members. We're building into them, uh, you know, their their personal knowledge. We work with a document that I received from Gallup. It's called the What You Do and then What You Need to Do document. Mm -hmm. and it really helps mm -hmm. to define actual uh, responsibilities because if if our strengths coaching doesn't root in performance, if we don't get it down into the granular level of what you do, how often you do it, which strengths you're using. Uh, then, as we know, and why we're we're all talking today about uh, us coaching, is that uh, strengths can go nowhere. It's a it's a good book on the shelf. Um, because last, the team building piece, and this is where, after we complete the the phases of lead with strengths that we do uh, with an organization, uh, we want to build beyond that. We want to uh, you know look at ex coaching and look at do the managers need attention? Do we want to come back around for a couple more team building? And those five pieces really give us a system that we can go in and, and work on with organizations and, and we're seeing great effectiveness from it. Yeah, I love that because again, you know, in the, in the trainings or in that manager and teams toolkit that, that's available online for people to purchase, it gives some ideas around that and it's it's funny you're saying this because even the course I just came out of, people were going, give, give me more on teams, you know, give yeah. me, this is a piece because every team is so unique, you right. know, and even that sense of competition, do those, does that team feel like they're really collaborating? You know, and all competing for the same thing, 
or do they even feel like there's competition within within the group? You know, and so Absolutely. I think I think those different factors, those five that you just hit on, are such good ahas, best practices again for hopefully many people out there. Um, I know there's some activity in chat too that that kind of leading around this. We can come back to that during the Q and A, but mm -hmm. but appreciate that you're you know you kind of hit on that piece. The other thing I know you've done and want to hit on this, and then Jim, if we've got some of those questions we want to come to, we can we can circle back. Um, I know one of the things that Paul Allen, who's our strengths evangelist, again, co-founder of Ancestry.com, came across Strength Finder, realized there's nothing more impactful to impact people's lives than, yeah. than, than strengths. So he's been with, with Gallup over a year, the last year, just kind of helping us think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Paul's really encouraged external coaches to do, again, whether they're on their own, independent, or working for a large corporation, um, is to to kind of be part of these meetups, right? So the yeah. meetup app that you can download on, on Android or iPhone, finding people in your area with common interest. It could be pottery, right? It could be DJs, but in this case, it's strengths, right? Specifically, mm -hmm. strengths coaches. Mm -hmm. I know you were one of the first external coaches that were able to kind of raise your hand, and say, "I'm going to try that in Sacramento." Yeah. I know when you and I talked as a maximizer. You, it's not perfected yet, right? So sometimes right. we go, talk to me after the next one, which I think you said is ne next week, right? Yeah, but share with us point. this idea of meetups because I think it brings an interesting piece into place of saying, hey, wait, Gallup, you want me to meet up with my competition of other coaches in town? Right, right. You know, oh, yeah, there's collaboration, but are we, are we kind of stepping on each other's territory? So talk mm. about that a little bit from your perspective, you know, what you saw, what worked, and... Um, yeah. Again, that competition versus collaboration piece amongst your peers. Absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll start with b being a, a person who collaborates. Uh, that when Paul first asked me to to or mentioned the meetup, I thought he was sending us to a dating site. So I, I had to. <laughs> you weren't sure your wife was okay with that. I, I wasn't yeah. sure what what we were signing up for, and then he he explained it very well. You know, the the and, and once I investigated the site, obviously the the meetup encompasses so many different interests. You can yeah. find almost a meetup for anything uh, on on their site, and and very popular, very well known. Yep. Uh, but but at the same time, uh, being a, a maximizer, being strategic, I, I wanted to understand a, a good way to put this forward. And I have a colleague in town. His name is Brian Sharp. And Brian and I have uh, been in the same coaching circles, masterminds for years, and uh, really strong collaborative relationship. Brian's the CEO of a company called Presenter Box. And uh, in fact, I mean, today is just doing amazing work with videos and, and other things. You'll see one on my website, in fact. Uh, but Brian uh, has been doing meetups for five years. And mm -hmm. recently did one where he had 400 people in attendance, and it was, I mean, he knocked it out of the park. And so Brian gave us some great uh, feedback of best practices, guidelines. And so taking from him, we were able to implement that. Um, but to your point about competition, you know, we had to, we had to understand that it, when we do a meetup, uh, it's probable that trainers, uh, coaches, people who use strengths, that they're, they're going to show up because – uh, when you market to strengths and enthusiasts, some that, have, some that have been trained and are certified, and others who haven't, right? So you kind of get a little bit of both. Yeah, absolutely. In, in Sacramento, you know, being a state capital, we have many you know, public sector trainers. We we run into private sector trainers and then the independent coaches, and 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 that those are some of the folks who showed up. And so what we decided, Jeremy, is I, I started to look for other trained coaches in the area to lock arms. Um, one yeah. gentleman, his name is Adrian Ruiz, and he's the, the executive director of a, a nonprofit called Youth Development Network, and they're a uh, huge strengths enthusiast. And, and Adrian will actually be in training in March, I think, with you. Okay, cool. And so cool. we locked arms and, and looked at each other's talents and did what good strengths coaches should do and figured out who would do what best and went to work on the first one. And we, we, uh, we had 55 people uh, RSVP to come, and they say your first meetup, you expect about 70%, had over 40 in attendance, mm. uh, and, and it was an awesome experience. But of those 40, several trainers and coaches, and uh, what we decided was that we would collaborate. And even though, even though we have to be adult, we have to understand that we're yeah. still competing. There's times yep. where we will absolutely cross over. Competition yep. is better. Competition increases the value for the customer, and that's a good thing, and when we're – when we're mature about that process, it's great. I have uh, other certified strengths coaches where we've gone to bid on similar projects with them, and you know, I'm sure you know we're not all giving away our secret sauce, right? You know, of what we of what we offer, but you know, let let the market decide. And as far as collaboration, we're all better. We're all better when we can work yeah. together, when yeah. we can share best practices. Well, and again, from Gallup's perspective, I mean, for years we were saying if you want to be a, a certified coach, you can either do that in the the company that you work with, you know that partners with Gallup to, to come in and help train you, but it's limited within the walls of that organization. Mm. Or 
hire a Gallup coach and we'll, we'll come out and do it. But we've realized if you want to reach a billion people, we need a million coaches. So again, That's even right. if it's 50, 60, 600, 6,000 in Sacramento, there's enough people to coach. And I think one, one last piece I want you to talk a little bit about, because I think in finding your own niche, and as you and I have gotten to know each other a little bit, there's an element for you that you love coaching. It was something you did before. You know, you're, you're a huge fan of the tool. But what you found is, in, in many ways, you're also a CEO, right? Yeah. You're a business leader. You're a visionary. And there's coaches, some of, again, who are even in the course this week, who say, I don't want to do business development. I don't want to go find the coaches. Gallup, can you send them my direction? Yeah. Um, and in a way, we can, and that's what we're doing with the certified coaches on the site, like yourself. Right, right. But talk a little bit about even where you've kind of found your niche of coaching coaches, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of finding some of those people that just want to coach. You can run a business. You can serve and support them. Talk a little bit about that just for people that are out there listening and that might... They might yeah, absolutely. identify yeah. with that, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll digress slightly. You know, with, with the meetup, for example, just the, the the actual do's and don'ts guidelines. There are people that would love to start a meetup and, yep. and want to get going, but they wouldn't know how to put that together yet, or 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 what best practices are. And we want to be a place where we can share those ideas, collaborate, yep. give best practices. Let's talk about what's working. And there's many uh, forums online that are that are helping to accommodate that. And I think it's so important for this movement that we're all. Uh, getting to share those ideas and so for 34 strong with the collaboration piece with our unique team realizing that w we have this marketing expert in this uh, you know CPA and an MBA and then right. Brand Brandon and then you know then 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 us you know the 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 guy that that gets to you know lead and serve uh, that that I'm passionate about building the teams and so we realized here local that, that that there were coaches that want to coach but they don't necessarily want to sell they don't want to market um, they they want to coach, but they they could use a system. They want to train, but they they would love it if you just set up their schedule and put them in place. And so we've been collaborating and building that team uh, on our website. We've we've put our first four coaches that are that are connected with us doing that now. And uh, we've had coaches contact us from all over uh, the country, uh, even different parts of the world, interested. And so uh, what we've started is a, a coaching collaborative where we where we want to share best practices in a call format and begin to to offer those pieces that uh, can be beneficial and then allow for you know healthy discussion uh, to take place and and guidance and see um, you know can we be a source that brings uh, leads that brings you know opportunities and, and out here in California they call them getting gigs you know can we yep. get gigs for you can we get the yep. gigs and get you in those engagements and get you get you going to where you you know you could do what you do best and then what we will do best is we're, we're going to build the structure, the system that, that you can work under and be successful. Yeah, I love it. And again, there's people out there like you who want to do the same thing, and there's plenty of opportunity for that, but there's people that you just mentioned who just say, if I could partner with a Brandon you know, or others who are doing this, I think that serves them all too. So, Jim, what questions do we have out yeah. there that are popping up in chat? We have yeah. a few. So uh, one was, where do we find the uh, what you do, what you need to do Gallup instrument that Brandon referenced? Yeah, so part, part of it, um, and two different pieces, one is uh, we have something called Theme Insight Cards that really unpack each of the 34 themes. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon, I'll let you talk to you about other resources you've used, but also in, the, in the, um, the Strengths Coaching Kit. So I mentioned the courses that are available on you know, coaching.gallup.com or the Gallup Strength Center website. You can go to either of those and, and find those upcoming courses. We do in-depth training there, but we've also made a $500 kit available. There's a couple, three different kits actually um, that you can kind of choose which one meets the needs of, of what you're doing. But in that resource to Jim, to whoever's asking that question, there's some great resources in there around helping somebody, and Brandon used the term name, claim, and then aim. Mm -hmm. But who am I, that what do I do, what do I bring, yeah. those pieces are there. I don't know if you'd add anything else, Brandon, of what... Yeah, and and I and that 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 was from the first uh, coaching uh, training that I went through. Yep. I, I took it in the the three stages, and so that that document was one that that we discovered there. And I've since you know been able to share that with other trained yep. coaches uh, because it was kind of slipped in honestly. And I remember going through thinking this this is the document that is very powerful, very yep. helpful. And so yep. um, and, and to the point that you mentioned earlier, you know. As we're trying to reach a billion people and train a million coaches, the reality is is not everyone will go through the Gallup door. No. And, and those of us out here who are, are trained, certified through Gallup, we have an opportunity to train trainers. We have an opportunity to to put into place things that can 
benefit them because there's many coaches who have don't have formal training. They buy a kit, they're out there, and if they had access to training, and maybe it's not possible yet for them to go to Gallup, uh, we, we have an opportunity to stand in that place and, and offer that training. And that's one of the documents that we definitely uh, want to use and go through. Yeah, I think that practice, and I know you, you shared this with me, of something you've done where if individuals you know buy the kit or you do a one-day workshop where you know the, the kits are made available to people as part of the cost of the program, but you're giving them that kind of intro to how do, how do we not create malpractice, right? How do you, yeah. how do you, if you're distributing drugs, how do you do it, pharmaceutical drugs, how do you do it in a way where you're <laughs> appropriately using it? Right. And I say that, but I've seen people, you know, grab a kit or not a kit and coach somebody and go, ooh, you've got command in your top five, sorry, you know, versus like you said, if your daughter, you see it, you embrace it, and you go, this is awesome, yeah. let me help, help her find ways she can be a leader, but be aware of that where it moves from raw to mature, it moves from talent to strength. So I love that you guys are doing those kind of intro to coaching workshops that mm -hmm. don't just leave people on their own and then at some point you know they can maybe step into if that's the right step for them to be certified you know in and through Gallup so yeah cool yeah, definitely Jim any yeah. yeah Trey Arthur had a couple questions so that was Mary Sue by the way Mary thanks okay. for that question Thank you, Mary. Trey also had a question he said is, is 34 Strong Inc. primarily business coaching or are there other groups that 34 Strong supports so 34 Strong we are strengths finder coaching so we primarily uh, working with businesses, however, with some of the coaches that uh, we're working with, uh, we're definitely looking to impact families. Uh, so to coach with families, we coach individuals. Uh, I'm coaching someone right now who's in a career transition point. Uh, in fact, an amazing story. This gentleman, 50 years old, um, lost his uh, wife and a daughter in a plane crash. Mm. And you know, he's raising his 13-year-old son in, in this place where he needs to transition. And uh, he says to me on the call the other day, he said, I... I I don't want to die with my song unsung. There's something in me that needs to come out, and I need I need to find that place, those strengths to bring that out. And, and so we're definitely working with individuals, families. Um, one of our coaches has a, a marriage focus. Uh, she she and her husband have a, a ministry that they do. That they uh, she's actually going to be speaking to a group uh, this week uh, for marriage and talking about strengths. And then obviously being uh, the father of seven, and you know, running the uh, strengths lab here at the Miller Miller <laughs> campus, um, we we are definitely interested with uh, strengths and parenting. So uh, yeah, it's I mean, primarily the the business folks, we, we work with them, but nonprofits, for profits, uh, organizations, we we're loving to do that. And then uh, early in the conversation, uh, one of the guests had asked, "What's the earliest age do you think kids can take strengths?" Uh, I have an 11 year old and a 14 year old. Some thoughts on that. Uh, the Strengths Explorer uh, starts, I believe, at uh, 10 years old, goes to about 14, and so my 10-year-old has actually uh, taken the uh, Strengths Explorer, and, and it's, a, it's a nice test because it, it isn't timed, and so the, the kids have a little more time to go through, and they get their top three of 10, and, and that's a phenomenal. That's my daughter, Michaela, who took that one, and amazing to see her organization talent, how it lined up. Uh, but around, around 14, a 15-year-old uh, reading level is a good age, uh, to do that. In fact, after this call, I'm I'm packing up to take uh, 20 plus teenagers up to the mountains for a winter retreat for youth group we lead, and the, and the teenagers all have taken the strengths finder, and we have a a team grid for them. We're going to get to go through. Uh, so that th those are the ages that I've understood and and seem to be uh, working well. Yeah. Then one more. Uh, how does the initial call go for new clients for you? We get this question in just about every call to coach program that we do. Those initial new clients, are they mostly referrals from current clients, advertising, or cold calls? Uh, that's a great question. There's different ways that, that we reach people. Uh, we, uh, we definitely want to drive traffic to the, our website, so we have downloadables that people can get there. In fact, uh, today, for, for those of you listening, on our website, there's an ebook, Play Like a Team, that you can download. Um, and then you know we're able to talk to people through that medium. Uh, we do a lot of networking in town. Uh, one of the niches for 34 Strong in our area is real estate, so we spend time out networking and, and gain referrals uh, through that face-to-face -face medium. Uh, and then uh, referrals from clients absolutely becomes a part of that. The meetup uh, has actually served also uh, for some lead generation. I will preface by saying though that at the meetup, one of the big do's and don'ts is do have an awesome program, do give great content, don't sell at the meetup. Let 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 that happen incidentally. Uh, people uh, are turned off pretty quick by that. Uh, but um, it, it will open doors, and it, and it certainly has for us. 
Very cool. And then let's plug the meetup one more time that you've got going on in Sacramento. Just a few okay. details in case anybody missed that. Yeah, it's on Tuesday, uh, the 25th at 6 p.m. And we were given great advice that uh, the best nights for meetups, Tuesday, Wednesdays, or Thursdays, and uh, hotel with lobby bar. That was uh, what, what uh, my friend Brian shared. Uh, let people, you know, they're, they're getting off work. They've come a little ways and in a central location. So we're Tuesday, the 25th, 6 p.m. It's a courtyard Marriott right in uh, the central part of Sacramento off one of the major freeways. Uh, it's a landmark hotel. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. We have 40-plus uh, people that have RSVP'd for this one and uh, looking forward to a, another great night. And Michelle and both Michelle and uh, Mary and Chad are kind of asking what, uh, what just to get give a tentative outline. You should talk about you know we talk about make sure you have strong program. So, mm -hmm. so what will be on tap? Okay, very good question. And and we do actually have a document that that uh, we're we're going to make available for people some guidelines with scheduling. And so if you if you do download our book or look at our coaching collaborations, will come out. Uh, but a great outline is the first. First 20 minutes, spend some time networking, let people connect. Um, we, we have sponsors helping to provide for some of the food. Uh, then uh, we, we uh, have an introduction, welcome, a, a nice icebreaker. Adrian Ruiz, who I mentioned earlier, his team is phenomenal with, with crowd breaker icebreakers. We go into what we call the strengths finder of the month, where we select one or two people that, that are uh, real-time users. They're using it professionally, personally, education, uh, you know, in life, and they're going to share for about eight minutes, and then we'll go into uh, the the portion of the night where one of the strengths experts uh, will share and, and give good content, share applicable ways that strengths can be applied. Uh, so all told, that program uh, takes about an hour at the end. Usually we'll have door prizes from the sponsors, so we'll, we'll give those out and end with about 20 minutes uh, for more networking. And at the, the first one that we did, because we've done exactly one, this is number two, uh, we're looking forward to seeing... Uh, this 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 uh, the, the networking that happens because it, the, there's a, a great reason why people will come back and that is that you're giving them good content. And I was actually advised uh, don't go the casual mixer route on the first time because you're giving people a reason to come back. Go with your best, but lead lead with w what you have to bring and and uh, move that forward. Very cool. Well, if you made it this far in the program, we had some issues with YouTube uh, today, and so if you're if you're watching the recorded version of this, maybe you got blocked out on our site, and uh, we appreciate you getting all the way to the end of this of the program, and uh, we'll make this available for replay. So if you came in late, we had quite a few people jump in the chat room late. We changed the time to to accommodate some training that we were doing, so we moved it up, and we might have missed some people. It will be available for replay as soon as we're done here. So. I'll be putting out the links in chat, folks. I'm sure we're going to get a host of folks that will show up at uh, noon central who will be like, where to go? And we'll make that available on replay right away. Jeremy, tell us a little bit about what we have coming up here on Call to Coach here, and, and maybe we can tease out a little bit of Theme Thursday. Yeah, you bet, Jim. So, you know, you mentioned at the start of the call that first and third, first and third week of, of uh, each month, we're going to continue to do these Call to Coach Again, a variety of independent coaches, people that are using it within their organizations. So March 7th is our um, next call. Larry Broughton is going to be with us. Larry's the CEO of Broughton Hotels. Um, great story, again, of just kind of how strengths impacted him personally. He's an entrepreneur. Um, we, you know, we talked about how we just launched our entrepreneurial strength finder tool um, in January. So some great insights there of when, when you see somebody with raw entrepreneurial talent, identify their strengths and the strengths of their team. Um, I think there's going to be some great insights for coaches with, with Larry. So again, March 7th, that'll be there. And then as, as you mentioned, and, and a few months back, we had Kurt Liesveld on. Kurt's a uh, consultant with Gallup and uh, kind of really investing his life into coaching coaches and leading training. And a lot of those great documents we talked about were Kurt's creation is, is you know part of his passion around strengths. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to be helping us launch what we call Theme Thursday where we just kind of uh, drill deep into one of the 34 themes so that we can kind of help understand it, appreciate it. You know, one of the things we see all the time is of the 34, typically every one of us has four or five we don't really get, and it's usually because there are lesser themes. And so Kurt will emphasize all the time whenever he's in front of people, will say, find a strengths poster child, somebody that you, you know, you don't name your child a name of somebody you didn't like from high school, right? But if, you, if it's somebody you like, you're like, all right, we go with that. All 34 themes should have some positives to them, a poster child, a deeper understanding. Mm. And so we're going to be launching that in the coming months as well. So that'll be a lot of fun to, to see those happening on Thursdays. 
Very cool. We have a lot ahead for you. Just a couple reminders as we head out. We'll stay around for some, um, and hopefully you guys you guys can still hear me okay. I just yeah, we little, can hear you, okay, Jim. Very good. Yeah. Sorry about yeah. that. Uh, everything nope. froze up. <laughs> It'll be a miracle for us to get through this today. Uh, we'll right, we, we will remind everyone a full host or a full list of all the scheduling and everything's available for you with these resources. A lot of things we talked about today. So the coaches training, the coaches kit, all those uh, uh, resources are available for you at our Gallup Strength Center. Super easy to remember. Just go to gallopstrengthcenter.com. You can send us your questions or comments, uh, and if even if you like to be a guest blogger, we do look for those on our coach's blog, and, and have a couple different avenues for you to write if that's something you like to do and you're good at it. Send that email to coaching at gallop.com. You can also catch the recorded audio and video, which may be really important today because some of you <laughs> might have missed uh, a little bit of it, and we make it available for replay right away, or it's out on our site. Um, as well. All those links to our Facebook group and YouTube page, they're all available, coaching.gallop.com. And uh, we want to thank Brandon for coming on today and being a part of our program. Uh, we'll look forward to the next Call to Coach, which we'll do in two weeks on a Friday, and uh, we hope that you guys will be here as well. Stay around for the post show. Remember, you don't get the post show unless you come to the live show. So come out. We've got a couple more questions for Brandon. Thanks for coming out, everybody. I appreciate it. Bye. Okay, let's. Um, I had one more question from chat for you, Brandon. And on my my video on the laptop is completely locked up. I have no idea if we've got good <laughs> video or bad video. Or it's even working anymore. It's, it's it has looking been, good to Michael and I. So oh, good. I am. We're holding this together just with sheer willpower today. Um, the let's you're see. saying whether you're in studio or out, it doesn't matter, basically. Well, it just seems like <laughs> it. Yes, Brandon. How many sessions does it typically take before you notice clients internalizing their use of their themes? That's from Julie in chat. Good question. Yeah, Julie, that's a great question, and you know that's a question that's that's answered depending upon their theme. Jeremy just touched on, um, you know, the the knowing the 34, knowing the depth of them, and understanding, you know, the differences of of how long it takes people to to really accept, appreciate, and own these and then begin to apply it to actual action. If we know that most of us come from a weakness orientation, um, we come by it honest, it takes time. So maybe your analytical deliberative may take a little uh, longer than potentially your positivity, you know, activator communication folks. Uh, so, so that answer really will be dependent. Uh, I've seen it happen pretty quick. People buy into strengths right away and they're, they're applying it. Other times it's taken uh, four, five, six sessions, and then the light bulbs go on. Very good. Lori, uh, Lori was asking in chat, when does Theme Thursday start, and when, and how do I access it? So Theme Thursday starts March 13th, right here on the Call to Coach channel. So you don't need to go anywhere. Although I've got some YouTube work to do after I'm done today <laughs> to get some things fixed, but uh, it will be right here. Same concept. So it'll be audio and video, and then. Coming up in early April, we'll actually have all the video or all the audio available for you for download on iTunes and Stitcher. So that is coming up as well. If you want to download it to your to your phone, Android, iPhone, whatever you got, Windows Phone, uh, we'll be making those options available for you as well. So Thursday, thanks, Michelle. Thursday, March thirteenth, uh, that is coming as well. Samantha asks, I'd like to have more training on my individual strengths. Should I attend coaches training, or are there other, are there other types of training that coaches that uh, Gallup offers. Jeremy, maybe that's a good one for you to. We've had that question a couple times today. Yeah, I, I, and one of the, one of the things you know on that, Michelle. Again, we've got that kind of intro to coaching toolkit that for people that are saying the additional cost, or I just uh, maybe is coaching really what I want. Um, for managers out there, there's a there's a, a manager toolkit. Really, if you're just somebody that's going, I want to understand strengths for my team. We've really tried to design some different kits and resources to help you with that. In regards to training, though, that is something that, again, new to, new to Gallup and our external coaches that we just launched a year ago is if you go to the Strength Center um, website, you'll see on there there's different training opportunities. There's two-day training opportunities, or there's a four-and-a-half day. We call it our accelerated course. Mm -hmm. um, we've begun to have those globally. Um, continuing to kind of spread them around the United States as well. So just trying to make it easily available for people to go through that Gallup official certification. Or as Brandon mentioned, there's kind of more introductory, help us connect, network, learn from each other um, that, you know, is training. But I think there's different elements based on who you are and what you're wanting to do with it. Yeah. So. 
And and we are trying to create an army of coaches, yep. uh, just like Brandon here, to help to do yep. a lot of that. We can we cannot do all the heavy lifting with uh, with every. If we're going to train a, a billion people, we cannot do that in our infrastructure. So we're we're working on a a billion or a million coaches uh, to be able to help us with that. So that's coming as well. Jeremy, a question, and maybe for both of you, and we get this uh, just about every call as well, but I'll throw that out there. Um, so one of the guests asks, asked this question. I recently completed the StrengthsFinder assessment. I wonder if the mood at the time of assessment can influence the results. If I take the assessment again, would the results be the same? Yeah, there's a, there's a great document um, that you can access uh, that really kind of helps think about this test, retest, reliability piece. And so we know statistically it's actually a 0.74 is kind of that, that likelihood of what would you see change. So you can kind of say seven out of your top ten would be the same. They'd shuffle around a little bit. Um, most likely in most cases people just see their top five, so they're wondering, oh, what are my six through ten? Um, on the Gallup Strength Center site you can purchase your full 34. But mood, whether you're on vacation, whether you're at the office, good day at work, bad day at work, if you went with your gut, um, our science, and again, the neuroscience that even kind of predicts the, the human brain. We had a, neuro, a doctor who's a neuroscientist um, in the room this week, so it was really fun to hear kind of his thinking, and he's written five books on the human brain. But really kind of from age even 16 to 18, who you are and the, the patterns, the way that you operate are who you are. Mm. Um, so there's very little change as far as, you know, kind of that contextual component. Um, the one thing we do ask is sometimes people take it and take it through the mindset of I'm asking because Brandon told me I needed to take it and if I didn't have responsibility high he wasn't going to hire me which is not how the tool is meant to be used and it also skews completely how I'm answering. The goal is that people go with their gut and and innately whether you took it at 18 or took it at 55 who you are is, is who you are. So no, you would not need to take it again and sometimes people want to just test it um, you could spend the ten bucks and <laughs> do it again. Gallup's okay with that, but typically what you'll see is three of three or four of your five are the same. And again, if you're looking at your full thirty-four, those top ten or twelve just shuffle around a little bit, but primarily are are your dominant themes. I, I've actually had a, a relative, my brother-in-law, uh, wanted to test that uh, number, so he took it seven times. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> First of all, thank you. Because thank you, uh, yeah. yeah. So the seventy dollars was spent, but his high <laughs> input learner intellect, he he needed to know, and uh, you know, e even when he said he was trying to get different results, he kept coming back with the exact same yeah. results nearly every time. And so I I say to that exactly what Jeremy says that that when you take it the, the first time, your your talents are recurring patterns of thought, feeling, your behavior, and yeah. the mood affects it. And and I think Jeremy's point about uh, maybe the duress you're under when you take it can affect. Uh, however. Um, you, your recurring patterns are who you are, and that, yeah. that that's part of how it, it's expressed. And it's one of the one of the things. And I know Brandon, you feel this way too. But even when I was working leadership development before I came to Gallup, what I appreciate about Gallup is the research that backs it up, right? So it's mm -hmm. not just a tool that you and I, Brandon, got together and said this is cool, but right. the research that's there, the ongoing validation. Actually, um, coming up here in a few months and call to coach, we're going to have uh, you know, Dr. Jim Asplin and Dr. Jim Harder join us. And they're kind of the they they will call themselves the nerdy scientist guys who, you know, just love digging into the details. Um, but these guys are world class at who they are, what they do. So whether it's mm. this tool, whether it's the entrepreneurial strength finder, um, whether it's our our Gallup Q12, which is our employee engagement survey, all of that is grounded in research that has phenomenal reliability. That then lets you and I as coaches consultants be that much smarter because we can trust the tool. I always say it's sort of like a a, a, a carpenter who's got a level, they can trust that level to say it doesn't just look like you know the board is, is, is level, but we put this on it and it shows us with reliability that it's accurate. So, yeah. Jeremy, I think uh, along those lines, you know, a, a lot of folks when they take it, uh, like what you said, the key is if you're taking it in a, in a if you're if you're answering the questions honestly. And yes. Obviously, if you go into the assessment and you take it the first time, and then you you answer a completely different set of questions differently, yes. right? Yeah. You're it, that's going to be different, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's it's about being in the and so if if you took it under heavy duress and you answer the questions differently, that's not a normal state, right? We wouldn't say duress is a normal state. So we're yeah. kind of yeah, okay. Just just clear because people say that all. No, yeah, and two two examples of that. Chip Anderson, who co-wrote Strengths Quest, uh, was a professor of education, 
Um, I was in a course he led around strengths, which was which was an honor years ago before he he um, passed away. But one of the things he said, somebody said, I don't think this is this is me. And he said, Did you lie? You know, are you a liar? Because if you lied to the machine, whether it was for your boss or for whoever you were going to share the report with, it's not going to be accurate. And I even had a, another college professor of education in our course who said she had a student, and it was actually a, a, a Catholic school, so a faith-based school. She said the student was so convinced she had com communication in her top five, but she didn't, right? She took the assessment. It wasn't there. Took it a second time. It wasn't there, sort of like your brother, Brandon. Mm -hmm. But her senior year, she came back to this professor and said, God has changed me, right? So she spiritualized it. I now have communication in my top five. And her professor said, well, how many times have you taken it? She said, eight. You're like, okay, either God changed you or you finally lied to the machine enough that you got the answer you wanted to get. So I think that's that's the accurate piece, Jim, too. If you're not going with your gut, sometimes people have such low self-awareness, they're just and they're insecure about the way they're answering, they're just put in the middle. Again, it's it's kind of these these multiple pairs of are you this or this. Sometimes you're both and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're in the middle too much, it will actually tell you we can't provide you data right now just because of that lack of self-awareness. And I think yeah. we rarely see that. But that's where the, the goal behind this is. It's you measuring yourself against you. It's not a 360. It's not best practices. It's these are 34 you know, buckets or themes of, of the millions of talents that are out there that can just help you identify and have better self-awareness of yourself. So, but you've got to be honest. Yeah. So. Uh, Brandon, I want to throw this to you, and we'll make this the last question before we wrap it up here. But um, I, we get this uh, idea all the time, and Jeremy, you touched on it uh, as yeah. well just a few minutes ago. But people ask us, are there a set of themes that make good coaches? And mm. so, uh, you know, that's to me, that's a selection question. But, but Brandon, let me throw the, that to you. Are there a set of themes that you know? I don't. I, <laughs> yeah. I've seen amazing coaches uh, spanning the four domains, uh, all different variants of strength. I think a, a great coach uh, is committed to the people they're coaching. You know, they're consistent. They they're knowledgeable, competent. They know uh, where they're taking them. You know, they've taken time to learn their craft to continue to develop it. And so, from the developer theme to uh, you know, someone high in harmony. There, there's definitely uh, room for coaches in all four, uh, 34 uh, of the themes. Jeremy, any, you want to add any to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Brandon's response 100%. And I think this is where people sometimes will say, well, in order to be great at sales, do you need to have competition and achiever? The answer is no, right? You need to be, you need to want to win and be a hard worker. But my maximizer belief could look like that, right? So the mm -hmm. same thing with coaching. You need to be a great listener. You need to be somebody that masters the themes. You need to be somebody that gives advice that leads toward change. But you could look at any combination of the signature themes and come up with that. And I do think in certain settings, we always say like when you see kindergarten teachers, you see a lot of developer empathy versus command, right? Instead of telling the kids what to do and just sit down, do you see that really listen and come alongside? I think there's, based on who you want to coach, if you're somebody that mm -hmm. coaches executives, some of those, you know, higher courage themes are really critical. If you're somebody that coaches people in career transition, restorative, and some of those other things, you might go, all right, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. But Brandon's answer of no, there's not a perfect top five. Um, the resource, by the way, if you're interested in more on this, is uh, Strength-Based Leadership. Uh, looks at CEOs, four different CEOs or chairmen of organizations where people ask that same question with not coach but with CEO. What are the best top five of a CEO? Does it need to be futuristic, strategic, a cheat? It doesn't matter. What matters is they know who they are, they know where they're very strong and where they're at their best, and then they surround themselves with others. And Brandon, you gave us a great example of that at the start of the call. So uh, the short answer is no, <laughs> but there's multiple <laughs> paths to get there. Yeah. No, very good. Brandon, thanks again. If you're listening live, we're going to end, or I'm going to attempt to the end the broadcast here. We'll see how I may have to reboot the computer to yeah, actually right. get that to work. So. But uh, we're going to end up here. Uh, Brandon, uh, Jeremy, thanks for uh, for hanging out with me. You today. bet. Thank you for having thanks, me. Thanks, guys. You bet. Let's see if we can end this broadcast.